These are radiography positioning principles filmed at Central California School of Continuing Education, narrated by Alex Flood, instructor for the Limited Permit Radiography Program. So concepts for positioning, um, starting off positioning accuracy. Um, accuracy, accurate positioning keeps us from having to perform repeat exams. It um, aids us in demonstrating the anatomy well and uh, physicians have come to expect um, accurate positioning and repeatable examinations um, each and every time they, they look at a radiograph. So what do you need to think about as a radiographer? Well, one, all pertinent anatomy should be demonstrated. Um, in general, we want to avoid having multiple images aligned on a single image receptor. Um, this causes errors in things like field uniformity, um, as well as if we're working, uh, if, we, if we are working with digital radiography, this just can, um, in essence, confuse the uh, processing algorithms and cause us to have images that are, for example, under uh, appear under or overexposed. Um, if you're working with film radiography still, feel free to align multiple images on a single receptor, making sure that they're all aligned to each other and none of them cut off other, um, uh, the anatomy of the other body parts. Collimation. Um, guidelines tell us we shall always show two sides of collimation and we should show four sides of collimation. Uh, I guess the biggest guideline here is that we can never have uh, our collimated field be larger than the receptor. Um, radiation safety officers really, really like it when we show um, at least two sides of collimation, uh, show uh, an attempt at collimating on every radiograph that we perform. Rotation. Um, it's important to make sure that the body part is rotated correctly. For example, uh, in this lateral forearm, the uh, forearm is in the neutral position. Um, it's not externally rotated or internally rotated, so the right amount of rotation is always important. And then central ray placement. Central ray placement is um, uh, a, uh, helps us align the body part to the center of the cassette. Uh, the way I teach my students is there, there's three things we need to think about here. There's where is the x-ray tube, where is the patient, and where is the receptor? There are always three things that need to be aligned. I teach them to align two of them and then bring the third into alignment. So for example, with this forearm, I may choose to align the cassette and central ray uh, to each other and then place the forearm in, uh, aligned to the central ray. If one and two are lined up, then, uh, then, then number three is going to be lined up to both of those. Image receptor markers. Uh, it's a legal requirement. Our, our x-rays are part of the patient's chart, which is a legal document. It's a requirement that we um, include hard anatomical side markers on all of our radiographs. Um, so those are shown those are shown here, uh, cut off in this view, but we can tell, still tell it's a right, an R for right, an R for right here indicating the right side of the body, and then an L backwards up here indicating the left side of the body. This L is backwards because this is a PA chest x-ray. The L is, uh, was put on the board the correct direction and got flipped around when the image was presented on the screen. These are some examples of procedural markers. Um, we can indicate right, right there on the radiograph, for example, if it was done weight bearing or if it was done in flexion, extension, standing, um, external rotation, internal rotation. All of these have their use in radiography and um, we place these anatomical side markers on um, to um, annotate certain, um, certain things that are different for this exam that would uh, uh, different from the standard examinations. For example, post-reduction. If you're shooting a post-reduction shoulder series after a shoulder uh, dislocation has been reduced, it's important to include that it's a post-reduction image so that everyone knows this is the one that was performed after the shoulder was put back in place. Um, other positioning rules and principles. Um, the way I've always been taught is that a one view is no views and you must show a minimum of two projections um, in order to have sufficiently demonstrated the anatomy. Even in the cases of trauma, you must still show two projections at 90 degrees to each other. 
a great example of why two projections would be so important here, this is an AP projection of the knee where there appears to be a nail. Um, the nail has a length to it. We don't know if it's embedded deep in the knee or if it is uh, very superficial on the knee. We only know where that nail is when we can view the lateral compared to the, P, to the AP view, projection, pardon me. Uh, because structures superimpose on each other, we need those two views to, de to uh, determine the um, left, right, up and down placement of, of the, the two-dimensional placement of the, of the foreign body or lesion, and the lateral view to determine the anterior posterior placement of the foreign body or lesion. If there's a fracture um, and we take only one view, we may only be able to see, um, it may appear that there is proper anatomical alignment and only upon the lateral view, for example, would you be able to see um, the fracture of fragments would not align. Um, this is a case where we see that there is decent alignment of the fracture of fragments on the lateral. They don't align so well on the anterior, post, anterior to posterior view. Um, if we only shot a lateral, we might think everything's perfectly in line, but we look at the AP and it's not so in line. Now, um, this is a post-surgical um, uh, two-view lower, lower extremity series to check for fracture alignment, and they can see that they are not perfectly aligned here. So the surgeon could make the determination, do we go back, do we do more, or is it sufficient? <clears throat> In uh, body parts that have many, many joints, uh, more than the normal amount, for example, like the wrist where you have eight carpal bones touching your distal radius and ulna, as well as the bases of all of your metacarpal bones, uh, many joint spaces in question, a minimum of three views is a good idea here. The third view is the oblique. In here, it's shown as the center image, the oblique view. I remember being trained as a radiographer, not knowing what obliques were, were for at the beginning, and everyone just told me they were to demonstrate joint spaces. Well, the truth is they do demonstrate some joint spaces better than others. All x-rays demonstrate joint spacing to some extent. Other, other projections demonstrate them better than others. The oblique is really there to give us that extra little bit of information, that extra piece of data that might help us, help the, help the physician in diagnosis. Long bones, uh, long bones having you know, relatively few joints um, really only require two projections. This is a follow-up exam on that prior, uh, prior image that we saw earlier of the externally fixated uh, comminuted tibia and fibula fracture that was malaligned. You see the malalignment continues here um, <clears throat> on the AP view. <clears throat> <clears throat> Placing radiographs for viewing. Um, one, you should think about the radiograph as if it were the patient facing the viewer. So that's how the radiograph should be presented. The patient's right is to the viewer's left. Lateral projections are put, uh, are put up on screen in the way that the radiographer would be looking at the patient. If it were like, for example, a left lateral chest x-ray, um, you're standing to the patient's posterior looking at them from sort of that angle and their front is to your right and that's how the image should be projected on the screen. Decubitus projection should be, pro should be put up on the screen in the decubitus position so that should be put on the screen sideways with the uh, body with the side of the body that has that is the upside shown up on the screen and the side of the body that's the downside shown at the bottom of the screen. Other considerations, the limbs should be placed in anatomic position. So remember, anatomic position is um, erect, hands at the sides, palms facing out. So an elbow would be placed on screen, an AP elbow, for example, placed on screen with the fingers pointed towards the ground. But the hands and feet uh, would be placed with the digits facing up. The way I have always uh, taught this is, um, what would the patient do if they wanted a physician to look at that body part? Um, they would say, ow, my hand hurts, holding up their hand with the fingers facing up. If they want to show a physician their foot hurts, they say, ow, my foot hurts, and they show the physician their foot with the toes facing up. So think about the way you would extend your hands or feet to show a doctor that that area hurts. That's how the image should be presented on the screen. 
Uh, note for chest x-rays. AP chest x-rays show with the L appearing the correct direction to us, the viewer. Uh, PA chest x-rays, if you don't flip the L around backwards, the L for left, around backwards when you place the marker on the screen, it's going to show up the the back it, it's going to show up backwards looking backwards when you put the PA up for viewing just the way these things uh, way it flips the image around when when we view it on the screen so um, my advice is for the PA if you know you're doing PA and that's all you do flip the L around the other direction so it shows up facing the correct direction when you're viewing it on your uh, soft copy digital image um, laterals, uh, left lateral chest shown with the left facing, uh, rather with the front of the body facing to the screen right and the posterior of the body facing to screen left. Uh, decubitus should also always be demonstrated with the um, upside up and the downside down. In this case, they used a right to indicate the right side of the body, which is perfect, as well as they used an arrow marker to indicate which side is up. That helps the radiographer after they process the image to uh, place it in the correct orientation. And that concludes my slideshow on positioning principles. Thank you.